Before I came to Ballastrand, I lived many years in the city, and I kind of liked the hustle and bustle of a busy life. I worked in advertising for many years, and I was pretty good at my job. The focus of my life was basically to try and get out of life as much as possible, and if you forgive me for using that often used phrase, to have a good time. In other words, I was self-centred. The idea of having a soul didn't even occur to me. And to be honest, I didn't think it really mattered actually. I was born a Catholic, but I'd lost my faith. I did have a God though, and that God was called money. And it was money that I put my faith into. Anyway, my life ticked by and I gradually began to acquire the material things that life had to offer. A nice house, a nice car, steady income, two holidays a year, a pension, so on and so on. And surely there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I was a good citizen, I paid my bills, I paid my taxes, and the only law I ever broke was occasionally I did drive too fast. The only problem was, I still wasn't satisfied. I was unsettled inside, but I didn't know why. Every day, as I drove to work down the busy motorway, a question would come into my head over and over again. Surely there is more to life than this. Surely there is more to life than merely the gathering of money and material things. Then, one day, while I was just sat in my car waiting at traffic lights, life decided to interrupt my routine by sending an articulated lorry crashing straight into the back of my car. Four others were involved in the crash that day, with one of those people losing their life. Somehow, I had survived. After that came a period in hospital and some recovery time at home. And it was at this time that I began to question the very point of my own existence. I realised that on that day my life could have been over in a fraction of a second. And what if I had died that day? What then? What had been the meaning of my life up until then? Had I actually made a difference to the world at all? One night, I just couldn't get to sleep. My back injury was particularly hurting me and I just couldn't get comfortable. So I decided to try and get out of bed. I went over to the window and I looked out into the clear night sky. For the first time, the stars seemed endless and I suddenly felt quite small. I suddenly realised that if it was not for human consciousness, that I wouldn't even know the universe existed. I mean, I don't think even an intelligent chimpanzee looks up at the stars in wonder. No, consciousness is exclusive to human beings. The laws of evolution say that there is no point to evolution. There's no intelligence directing it. It simply responds to the forces of nature and the drive to reproduce. So let me get this straight. Um, we survive the best we can. We bring children into the world. Perhaps uh, we experience wonderful moments during our short life and then we die. Uh, our children then continue the same process. They survive the best they can. Perhaps they try to improve on their parents' wealth. Um, 
they too then bring more children into the world. Also they perhaps experience some wonderful moments during their short life and then they too die. And so it goes on. But what of those wonderful life experiences? What, what happens to those? Are they too destined to be lost forever? Is that it? Is that what life really is? Am, am I supposed to believe that? Am I supposed to believe that after billions of years since the universe began and billions of years of Earth evolving into a planet capable of sustaining life and then after millions of years of life evolution that the end result was a random accident of nature which produced a creature capable of understanding that the universe exists and that there's no meaning behind any of that? I suddenly became quite angry. I mean, I was angry at the universe. I was even angry at evolution for accidentally giving me consciousness. Because, in fact, all that consciousness had ever really given me was fear and worry. I used to worry about the economy and therefore I feared the future. I feared losing my job and worried that I might not be able to pay my bills, which then led to the fear of losing my house. I worried about my family, my health, and now I couldn't even enjoy my sports car for fear of being in another crash. But the biggest fear of all that consciousness had inflicted upon me was the fear of death itself. Having to live a whole life with the knowledge of your own impending doom only adds to the life struggle and the daily worries. For the first time, I began to think about the concept of God. Would the existence of God make life more sense? Would having an almighty creator give reason behind the forces of evolution and that reason being to actually create a being with consciousness for for what would be the point of god creating a creature that did not know he existed but i had never seen any evidence of a god i had never even felt there was a god and surely I would have at least sensed God when I was in that car crash. I mean, if there was ever a time where God was going to show himself, it was at the time of such a life crisis. But no, nothing, absolutely nothing. So there can't be a God. At this terrible realisation, I became outraged. I shook my fist at the stars and cried out in fury. I said, God, if you are there, if there is anything at all out there that can hear me, please show me something now. Just a tiny sign will do anything at all so I can believe because if everything I ever do every moment I experience every memory I treasure is in the end lost forever then life is nothing but a swindle so please hear me for if you do not respond I swear I swear it I will dedicate the rest of my life to trying to destroy the faith of any person who believes in God. For if I shall continue with this life, I need purpose, and a war against faith would at least give me that purpose. So please, God, hear me now.
sky, the starry sky, came fast falling towards me. It felt like the roof of a building was falling on top of me. I actually felt a physical force of energy surround my body and I was thrown off my feet and onto the bed. Then came silence. It was a silence like I've never known since. It was as though I was completely deaf, but at the same time I could have heard a pin drop from a mile away. I got up and walked around the room trying to understand this amazing feeling of inner peace. It was as though I didn't have a worry in the world and that everything was wonderful and always will be wonderful. I simply did not want the sensation to stop. And it was like, in fact, time had stopped too. I don't know how long this went on for, but it suddenly was away as fast as it had come. And afterwards, I cried like a baby because I knew, even my DNA knew, that what I felt was God. The next day I went to see my doctor because I, I didn't feel myself, I felt quite strange. However, my own doctor was away and so I had to see another doctor who had been called in to help. The doctor tested my blood pressure, did some blood tests, checked my eyes and whatever they do. And after all that he said something quite astonishing. He said this. He said, there's, there's nothing really I can say is wrong with you, but there are physical signs that something has happened to you. I have seen such symptoms before, but that was on a person who had said that they had had a supernatural experience. I could not believe my ears when I heard him say that, so I decided to tell him what had happened last night. He then told me that he was in fact a Christian doctor and that he had been given a message to um, stand in for another doctor in a town that was miles out of his usual area and that he immediately thought that perhaps it was an errand for God. And now, after seeing me, he knew he was right. From that day on, my life was never to be the same again. I quit my job, I began a new life based on Christian values and a newfound faith in God. Believing in God has not put chains around me. It does not mean I must obey an endless amount of rules and regulations. It has instead freed me to live a life with purpose. I no longer worried for the future and I did not fear death. Life now had a far deeper meaning. I was now on a pilgrimage, on a new life journey, 
And somehow that journey brought me to a place called Balastrand. The moment I came to Balstrand, I knew I was going to live there. It was as though I'd always lived there. I immediately saw that there was something unique about the place. It was more than the stunning scenery or the spectacular surrounding mountains or even the magical fjord itself. There is an energy force in Balstrand, and you feel it most when you are in the surrounding nature. God whispers to you through the rustling of the leaves or the ripples on the water. Come on a pilgrimage to Balstrand and rediscover your soul. Learn to understand what the soul really is. For the soul is our contact with God. It's how he talks to us. It brings purpose to life and meaning to existence.